Welcome! E aí, galera, beleza? Bem-vindo à nossa comunidade. Welcome to our community. Hey, what's going on, guys? It is OGC here and Tane. Uh, welcome to today's video. Uh, today, the first time ever, we're going to be doing a video series, um, hopefully bi weekly or so something like that, where it is a state of the game. Um, imagine this as developers' feedback or, or feedback for the developers but just on a bigger scale and more of a discussion um, viewpoint in a discussion format. So if you guys have things that you think, think should be changed in the game, whether it's buffs or some races are overpowered or something with events, let us know in the comment section below and we can bring that up in the next uh, state of the game uh, video. So uh, welcome team, well, welcome to, to the video. Hey, how you doing? I'm happy to be here. This is kind of weird, they're gonna see my face and all my weird facial expressions, so it should be a good time. That is awesome. So when I do something super stupid, we can literally see you facepalm. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so for, uh, I want to offer constructive cr criticism for Lilith, but also give them praise when they've done things right. So uh, to start things off, um, let's start off with the criticism because I, I think that would be a, uh, a fantastic way to, to start. Um, what are your your uh, your your thoughts? Which this these topics are come from you. So, uh, what what's your thoughts or what changes would you like to see when it comes to the Lucky Wheel? So the Lucky Wheel in general is a good event for someone who's trying to like diversify their growth. Like it, has, it contains a lot of different things in the game. My problem is with the tier bonuses for spinning the wheel they feel very lackluster. Like, for, for a lot of players to spin 300, 500 times is an extreme amount of Lenari for that player. Like, you take out the whale population, that's a lot of investment. That's a lot of effort to get to that far. And the tier rewards feel very underwhelming. Like, there's a Drake chest at 310 spins that has a flawless piece of Drake gear, but it only contains the old gear. So th those old pieces of gear have been on the lucky wheel now for, like, almost a year probably so almost everyone in the game besides the very new servers have plenty of molten gear for their gladiators so why wh what incentive do i have to spend to 310 to get a piece of gear that i already have everything flawless of or at least have full sets of the chest of 310 should be any piece of sate or drake gear it's one piece of gear per wheel it's not going to break the game. It's not going to take away the incentive to go to Seder Drake, but it'll help people get that last piece of flawless that they need to complete the set or whatever it may be. And it, it will have more value. And then like at 500 spins, it's the skin, which is good if you don't get it, but then it's advanced artifact materials, which you've just, if you've gone to 500 spins, you've gotten a literal ton of from the wheel in the process of getting to 500. So why is it more artifact materials? Why isn't, why isn't it something that's of more value, something new, like, some imbue chests or more draconic dust or um, some omni chests for runestones that let you pick the color of the runestone instead of it being, here's like 30 of each artifact material that you don't need. Thanks for going to 500. It's like dis it's, it's like a disincentive to keep spinning. It's almost like, why do I want to keep spinning when the rewards are worse as I go higher? It doesn't make a lot of sense. Yeah, in, in, in um, I, I think in, in my whole time of playing, I think once or maybe twice I was able to go to 500 spins. So if someone is able to, to go that high, there should definitely be, be uh, better rewards. And um, what, what, was that an event where you got so, it, we had one recently, you got so many chances per, per day and uh, it was like a galaxy looking thing and you clicked on it and you had a chance of getting chests and you pick out of the chest what you get, whether it's Dragonic or, do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, that was a new event. That was the first time we've had it. I, it's something Constellation, I think. I yeah. can't remember what it was. That was a good event. It gave a lot of good rewards. It lets you pick the rewards. I think that's a more beneficial way to go forward for Lilith is all the like rewards and stuff besides like the, the like specific tier bonuses can have like a certain thing in them. But like going forward, everything should be the option to pick what is in the chest because there are so many ways to build your account now. Everything's so diverse. So when it's only one way for like each event's like, oh, you can only get imbue. Well, if, like for me, I have level 50 imbue on three of my, my army types. So I don't need imbue anymore. Like, it's nice to have, but it doesn't do anything for me. So, like, why would I want to participate in that event? doesn't do anything. 
Yeah, in, in uh, maybe in, instead of getting like the uh, artifact material, maybe include that as, as an option to get out of those chests, but to offer the uh, chest where you can pick the rewards that, that you really need, uh, because I, I think that will help people in general to feel more incentivized to progressing, whether it's more spins in the lucky wheel or with any of the events. And to have those type of chests in some events, but, but not others is going to... Uh, you know, why why would I try for the lucky wheel when I can go for another one and get, you know, 200,000 uh, Dragonic out, out of it for a fraction of, of the cost? And what I want is Dragonic. So uh, I, I think if if uh, not just offering criticism for Lilith, but potential solutions to problems um, uh, for the lucky wheel, for the different tiers to offer more customizable customizable um, prizes for, for the different tiers. And it looks like they started doing that with... Um, was it was it the lead trials or one of the other events where one of the slots you can pick something out of it? But it seems like it's trending. It's finders keepers. It lets you add a slot when you get to the tier to pick what you want. So they have it coded in the game. So like they have the the events now have like a small chest you can get that has like my dogs are fighting. Uh, they can uh, have draconic dust or whatever it may be in there. So they they exist. So Lilith can probably easily make that change. Yeah, I mean, that 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 would be huge. Um, so moving on to the next one, uh, let's jump into some some race balance issue things. Uh, so recently, the Sylph trees uh, just got ten percent more base health for their. Twenty percent. How much was it? It's ten percent for regular trees and then twenty percent for dire. Holy crap! So what is going yeah. on in the Sylph world? So for PvP, it doesn't matter, but for garrisons, sylph trees are a problem. They uh, they have so much health in the garrison that they, the percentage healing that they get from like the dragon and gone and their own vine attack, as soon as they spawn that small tree, they have all the time in the world to go back to full health. And if you didn't get them low enough to trigger the affliction for that unit, then you've got to do it all over again twice after the first time. And then by the time you get that done, they spawn another tree. So it just it's like a it's a vicious cycle and like you can get through them you don't lose a lot of troops but it takes the entire siege time to to wipe out the trees and like you don't accomplish anything really so what Lilith needs to do is for garrisons only the trees should be limited to spawning one tree spirit and that's it when they're on defense they get to spawn one and that is it because currently people deploy like two rows of trees and they just keep spawning trees and spawning trees and spawning trees and it's it's abusive like. It's just dumb. Gotcha. And, and that that probably was not their intent when they when they put it all together. But um, yeah. So it was definitely some stuff to, to consider for uh, garrison uh, balancing. And uh, for this next one, um, I am now castle level twenty five, which means I have dragonic Ooh. storm. Uh, level seven prism too. Uh, more on that l later on when we get to the positive stuff that Lilith is doing. But um, what's what's your thoughts? What what needs to be changed with uh, prisms uh, for better or worse? So we have fifteen prisms now, which is a lot of prisms. There's not enough of the common shards in the economy. Like unless you're a whale spinning the wheel an obscene amount of times. Getting enough common shards requires too much money. I'm not saying everyone should have level 10 prisms. I'm not saying that by any means. Like, that requires money, and to be that strong, you know, that quickly, you got to pay for it. But, in general, the average player should not be struggling and walking around with, like, level 4 and 5 prisms as, like, their highest for all of their prisms. Like, again, this the Omni chests, where you can pick the reward, will help with this. But currently, there's not enough of the common prisms in the economy. It's It puts the gap between spender and non-spender too wide. Like, spending money should speed up your process, but it should make it so where, like, if you spend money, you're untouchable to the people below you. Like, there should be some parity where you can compete with those players if you play better or you're more skillful. But currently, they can just spend enough to where you'll never catch up and there's no hope. And it's a problem. It's killing the player base. Gotcha, and, and that that's uh that's very very true. When 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 I look at people's prisms, even, even like the the, it doesn't compare. But like the the whales on my server that have double to five times my my core power in um, 
their their prisms are, are I have higher level prisms because you know all I care about is the true ruby one for for right now so I pile in but there's a, is like three level three level four maybe a level five here, here or there but I, I I do remember a, a lot of the more free to play players. Um, like the idea of a level seven prism was, was un- unobtainable. Like like that that was that was a huge goal that they'd have to save for for a very long time. Um, <laughs> so I, I I think that's uh, I I agree with you 100. percent They need to bring it in, and that brings us to our first good job Lilith moment. So Lilith uh, for for the last uh, lucky wheel actually added in tears. Uh, like level up rewards for leveling up the new prism that came out in in the actual not uh, like the real dice board. board. Uh, the dice board. Sorry. Uh, for 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 the golden board is that what's called? Uh, it's the golden dice or something. The the golden dice board. The the thing where you get the true ruby. So uh, or true emerald. That's the new true ruby. So uh, they added in like the, the tier list there, and as you progress up, you're able to uh, get get more. Uh, to keep leveling it up, and as long as you do it somewhat uh, uh, smart, you can get a really good return on it. So when I was like, I did 125 spins on that, no prior prism stuff, I could not acquire prism stuff prior to that because I wasn't cast level 25. So simply from doing 125 rolls on that, I was able to take a prism and bring it up to uh, level seven and have the leftover stuff from hitting the level seven tier to save for the next one. So uh, I think that's a good move by, by Lilith. Uh, I think that they need more um, of things like that. Uh, those 500 uh, EXP for the common shard things, hopefully we see more of those pop up. But uh, yeah, so that one, good, good move Lilith. Yeah, I think that was a very, very good addition to the game. Like, that helps out the free-to-play or, like, not even the free-to-play. Like, it helps everyone, obviously. But, like, for me, I'm going to max out my prisms to level 10. I have enough prisms sitting around that I can max out the next two prisms that come out without buying anything from from spinning the wheel so much. But for people who don't do that, this is, like, the best way for them to get to a level 7 prism. And that's usually the highest they get their prisms to. So now they might be able to, to push one to, like, 8. And get like the Rufio Prism to eight or their Nora Prism to eight, and it like you know help them keep up. It's not going to push them ahead of everyone, but it's going to help them keep in the in the grind of like the average player in their bracket or their core range. But for the the next one, you you brought up earlier some uh, some really good thoughts on the uh, Dragonic changes. Yeah, so I think with the Draconic, having players have to get to one fifty nine before they can do Awakening is a mistake. It makes, again, another massive gap between free-to-play or cheap-to-play and the people who spend like crazy amounts of money. I think you should be able to get it to 109. You unlock the final attribute, the skill for that tree. And then at 109, you can unlock the Awakening, and then you can go to the first tier of that Awakening. So you can get the level 10 for, for each one of the, the brackets in there. So you get that first tier of, like say, protection unlocked at 109. And then you've got to level up protection some more, and then you can get to where you can unlock and go further in that tree. And they could do that for each one to make it a little more more balanced because some of the stuff in the Awakening is very strong. Some of it's kind of mediocre, but players should have the option to pick and choose how they build their dragons and what they want to focus on more, depending on what race they play, what color dragon they have. I feel like they've pigeonholed a lot of players and it's like holding them back from enjoying the game. All right, so for the next one for, for Lilith to uh, consider or for feedback, um, just going to turn this one over to Team and the Pokemon. So the pet system um, is probably the most aggressive pay-to-win thing they have introduced to the game to date. It is 100% Lenari-based. The leveling is okay up until like level 20 as a free-to-play with like your daily chests. and like Thankfully, they added it to dual tower rewards. But the pets are insanely pay to win. Like, hopefully, in the future, we see pet coins added to more things, added to Lucky Wheel or whatever it may be. But uh, again, it's another one of those things where, like, they went so hard in the pay to win direction with the pets that, again, it creates this massive gap. And I don't think Lilith understands their player base anymore. Like, the whales are going to buy everything no matter what. But when you only make the option to buy, it 
completely alienates like 90% of your player base and it discourages them from keeping to play. Like, why do I keep playing if the only thing you do is cater to a small percentage of the players? Granted, that small percentage, I'm part of that. We spend money on the game. But the rest of my house doesn't. But I don't have incentive to keep playing if the rest of my house quits because Lilith keeps pushing pay to win so hard. I don't, I'm, I'm not going to spend any more money if my house is gone. Then, then the revenue's gone entirely. They need to reevaluate the schedule at which they push new pay to win things and how aggressive they are. That is some, uh, some, some truth right, right there. Some, some, some real talk for sure, because it's, it's like an MMO game. Like what, 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 no, nobody wants to play by it by themselves. And if that gap, that gap's definitely already there. And if it keeps getting separated, um, continuously uh it, it, it essentially it, it's it's like a rope it's just going to snap at some, some point in uh, I, I can only speak for from my experience i've definitely felt that before um like, like look, look at the dragon armor stuff um so there's, there's just certain things you can't keep up with it even as a, like a moderate spender uh, I, I went over my, my purchase history for, for last year. A lot of people would say that I, I spent a lot, but it, I would consider that moderate. Like, Tane, Tane spends a lot. Uh, mine, mine was much much more moderate, and I could I could not keep up. There, there was there was still a, a humongous gap, and I could not keep up with people that budgeted a, a, a fraction of, of what what I was spending. Um, that had already built up in the past, like maxed out all of their artifacts and stuff. And I'm still trying to catch up and even spending a lot more. There was no catching up. I, I was just behind. So uh, I hope that they, they, they listen to that, Dane. Me too. Because if all the players in my house, the reason I play this is because I like the people in my house. I enjoy like talking to them and hanging out with them. If all the players in my house quit, uh, we quit right after them. Gotcha. Gotcha. So, um, with people quitting and now that, that everything is su super depressed um, and we are down, um, <laughs> let's let's talk about one race that used to be high and mighty. Uh, you know, they used to defend and create the most uh, most effective uh, mithril armor to go defeat Smog. However, this race has fallen off quite quite a bit recently. Uh, their name is uh, Dwarfs. So, what, what what's your thoughts on Dwarfs and potential to resurrect the, the race? So Dwarf is pigeonholed into Sniper Mech. That's the only thing they can do. Sniper Mech for everything. So they recently changed the snipers. I won't call it a nerf, but they changed how they work, reducing the overall critical hit damage so they can't keep one shot in Gladiators, which was a problem because like I have maxed out Prisms, maxed out Research, Massive Temple, and people like 5,000 core power lower than me, their snipers were still one shotting my Gladiators, which is ridiculous. Like, What's the point in having all this stuff if a single unit can kill all your heroes so with the changes snipers still can kill heroes but not like one shot them as frequently but on the flip side of that it makes it harder for them to kill cluster races and, and the like mechs are okay like they're great sponge units like they can take tons of damage but they're not going to like push a power side or like change the tide of a battle so i feel like lilith needs to make changes to blasters and miners and one thing they could do with miners they can make miners immune to crowd control so they, they, they don't have morale collapse until their shield breaks. But the problem is they can be crowd controlled so easily. They don't have as high a health pool and as many units as other cluster races. So if they get crowd controlled and they pick off a couple of units real quick, they usually collapse. And again, their ability requires them to make contact for their, their uh, chakra awakenings. So in order they have to make contact to plant their little bombs or do the pyro pincers and all this stuff. So if they're crowd controlled for the first, you know, 10, 15 seconds of the battle mainly, when those snipers are hitting all those headshots while they still have their attack speed bonus, nothing's happening. It doesn't do anything. It's kind of useless. So instead of giving them like 100% immunity to, to, to morale collapse, I think the armor way they have it set up is good, but I think they should be immune to crowd control for like the first 15 seconds. That 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 would be huge. That that and then for for the blasters, if they fix the uh, if they fix the fire off, so that the the first time, so so that any form of hard CC doesn't just completely shut shut it down, and then uh, and also make it maybe even like a rock and ale type of idea, where it's on its own separate cooldown for for the fire off. Um, 
I don't know, but the fire off is really, uh, it's a really unique ability. And I, I, I feel like ever since people uh, got Cleo for, for the first time, it's just been uh, really un, un, unusable. So I think for the blasters, like you said, making them like Rakan Ale, so the blasters have their own cooldown and it's not part of your skill set and make it to where it can't be interrupted, but it doesn't launch them all at the same time. Like you can be like, I'm going to set off this set of blasters and they go off and it can't be interrupted. It'll be strong. It won't be broken and it won't like make it to where people are launching off eight sets of blasters at the beginning of the battle and just wiping everyone out. But you got to do something to make blasters usable. Like, they're not good on defense on your garrison. They're not good in PvP. They're not good in PvE. They're not good in events. Like the unit's completely useless right now, and it's not. It's not good. Like they used to be super cool, and now they're junk. Yeah, and if they fix the the blast off portion or, or the fire off, whatever it is, um, because it, it used to be the the blasters were the counter for swordsmen, and all that I'm hearing from the high end uh, play is like swordsmen are like in, invincible, or they they just don't die, but the blasters, um, because of the AOE splash, it, it cut right through the, the damage mitigation that was naturally put out there from Swords. So if they could bring blasters back, it could have a direct impact on uh, metas and be like the anti-sword, potentially, of course, the damage stuff. And But yeah, it, it would be really cool to have that usable. Yeah, and then for tanks, I think tanks overall for like health and stuff are good. But, like, if you look at their damage rating that they have, it doesn't translate to, like, actual damage in combat. It, they do, like, no damage, even though they have a super high attack stat. I think they need better range, and all of their damage should be armor piercing. So it should go through shields, go through damage mitigations. You could lower the attack and just have tanks deal true damage. So, because, again, they're a large unit. They're awkwardly shaped. So if you want to field a lot of them, it's going to mess up your formation. You're going to have to use less heroes. So it's kind of a trade-off because right now, like, they don't really do any real damage. They're sitting duck. They get blown out by Rufio. I mean, they have their they have all these drawbacks and no positive to using them. So I think they should lower the attack stat and make it true damage that ignores all of the other things in the game besides, like, dodge. Like, obviously, evade's still a thing. But, like, as far as, like, physical mitigation and, like, resistance to critical hit and all that stuff tanks should ignore all that i mean they're a tank they should just be decimating stuff when they do hit it and they don't do anything right now gotcha yeah in dwarf has definitely sucked because if, if i think about mo most races well most races you you have multiple options uh like humans uh, you get swords archers healers um at different points in time uh the the calvary it, it has its uses um rock rockin ha has uh at, at least three three units if, if you include the the turtle with potential for more like mon monks can do really good in events um there it's all there for for everything uh except for for dwarf so uh some dwarf love and not necessarily sniper buffs but just making other stuff usable. Um, I, I, I yes. think that that would be huge. So, um, and I, I, I'm proud. I, I think we, we came up with some good solutions. Um, so that brings us to um, other things that Lilith has been doing awesome re recently. So uh, we just got the uh, second ever Finders Keepers event. Um, before I pass it over to Tame, because he has some uh, constructive crit criticism and ho hopefully some ch changes that can come through with it all, uh, we have to also recognize the good that came out of it. So the first good part is uh, it's Lunari. It's different than the Dragon Armor. You can actually save up and, and get it through through Lunari. Um, and as Tame says in, in the live stream, like you should uh save up so you can get it every time it comes out like if it comes out you should not miss it ever the second really good thing that i have to give a shout out to is they made it so that you can pick which greater ability you get if you do 130 spends which means if you miss out on the previous ability you can get it uh which is awesome for somebody like me that missed the first event all, all together and you can also roll and get the new ability granted it's a 0.11 percent chance it's uh 
you have a better chance of getting a skin from, from the Lucky Wheels, but it's still a chance nonetheless. Uh, granted, I got super lucky um, with Tane's luck, and we, we got both, both of the greater abilities, but I think that they're being careful uh, in implementing this, uh, the Finders Keepers, to allow for people to either catch up if they miss out on the first one and didn't realize how impactful it would, would be. But uh, I, I'm sure Tintin has some advice for, for people out there to consider, but also some constructive crit criticism as well for, for the spin rewards. So yeah, them adding the chest where you can pick it, amazing. I'd like thumbs up to Lilith because that was a good move. They didn't have to do that and they did it on their own without us having to complain about it which means they are paying attention to some stuff. So like high five, whatever, like that was awesome. Cause depending on what kind of dragon you have and like what race you play, the, the scales one is probably better for you, or maybe you want the new one, whatever it may be. But the, the fact that they gave you the option on the second event is good. So super happy with that. The only thing I have that they could change is that the fact that you can do a hundred spins each day, which is great. But after you do the 130 spins, and you get the skill, there's a there's a tier bonus at 180, which doesn't really correlate with the event. Like it gives two dragon scrolls and some other miscellaneous excuse me stuff, which isn't all that important. But why would I go past 130 when the 180 spin bonus isn't any good? And then why would I do a hundred each day to max out the event? Because there's a hundred like you can do a total of three hundred when there's no spin bonuses after that. And then if you're unlucky, like me, and you only get the one from the chest, I can only build one dragon right now. So I can't. I don't have the option of getting multiple skills. Like, I should get one at 130, and then if I do, like, the full, like, 250 or 300, there should be another chest. It doesn't have to be an Omni chest with both abilities or whatever. It could be for that specific event. It only has that skill in it. But give me the option. That way I can use more than one dragon, because currently... There's two greater abilities now. That's the only dragon I can deploy for PvP. If I deploy my other dragons that don't have those skills, I'm going to lose because they are that strong and that impactful. Because I did the full 300, and I got only the one skill from the 130 chest. So, yeah, that, that, I'm never going to... That's gonna... brutal. <laughs> yeah, that, that's... The 0.11% chance is so, so low. I, I think... It, what's the skin? Like, is it 0.2%? It is twice as li likely to get a skin as opposed to the the dragon skill. Um, yeah, but yeah, uh, good 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 event um, all around with, with some some good changes. Uh, you, you can uh, do do some um, or consider some, some small fine tuning for for in improvements. And did did anybody hit the eight x on the dragon skill? Yeah. So I, in, in WeChat, one of the the groups I'm in. Uh, one of the Chinese players hit a times eight on the dragon skill, which was nuts to see. So yeah, they're, they're, they should have gone out and bought like every lottery ticket in the city because they not only hit it, but they hit it with the times eight, which is crazy. Yeah, that, that would be because you get the times eight one every ten rolls. It was zero point one one, so just slide that decimal point down. So that's one in ten thousand. Wow. Uh, good for that. Well, they will right. never worry about the Dreamweaver ability. They can put it on every dragon that exists. We want to get a discussion going uh, because if people are taking the, the, the time to um, want to improve the game, clearly they, they care about the game and we all just want it to survive and be a, a good experience for everyone. So none of this is to knock on anything at all. It's just you know, th this is our, our our game and our quality of life, the thing that we love to do, and we just want to see it get better and better. And there are some trends of things mo moving better. All the Lunari and the new events. Ooh. Yeah. That was, that was right about that. Lilith adding Lunari to, to, like, more Lunari spots to all the events and doubling them for certain ones. And then Lilith adding the Lunari to all the events, like, increasing the Lunari spots for events, like, that you can win. And then doubling the Lunari value for some of the events. And then the new Trials event, Nightfire Monster having Lenari in the rewards before you even get to the final standings is amazing. It helps the free-to-play, low-to-play, like low spenders, medium spenders. They can now plan for events and like save the Lenari up and do dice board to get their true ruby or get a greater dragon ability or save the Lenari and hope that their favorite hero's skin comes out on the lucky wheel and they can do that. So that was a massive improvement to the quality of life in the game that 
Lilith deserves a high five for that. Like that was a very good thing they did. They need to do more things like that to keep the the lower end of the player base as far as core power and spending engaged because currently they they focus too much on the top end and the top end's not going to keep playing if there's no one below them to be in the house. Like I'm not going to be in the house by myself. So this was awesome. High five. The more that they could do to, to get the low spenders or free to play or moderate spenders, whatever it looks like to have options to go all in on events and the more often that they can go all in on it, an event. And I don't mean 500 spins on lucky wheel. I mean, uh, 130 rolls on, on, uh, the dragon armor or, uh, getting a, the true shard thing from, uh, the, the lucky dice. If they have more options to go all in on something like that, and it's all or nothing, they have to be able to go all in. I think that that would help with uh, re retention too. Yes, I agree. And you can probably hear my dog barking in the background. <laughs> <laughs> they, they agree too. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, um, Thank you very much, Tame, Tame for, for coming on. I, I, I appreciate it, and as always. Yeah, man. I have a good time. This is good. I, I think this will be beneficial to the community. We do this once a month towards the end of the month before like the next Lucky Wheel comes out so we can assess how things have progressed for that month. And then maybe Lilith will respond to us and tell us yes or no or have ideas. We'll see. You you have big dreams. You have really big dreams. Um, I talk I talk to them in VIP chat all the time. Trust me, they're probably tired of hearing from me. No, you you do <laughs> you do genuinely care about the game, so that that's why we can get passionate and we we want voices to to be heard. Uh, but with that, guys, make sure that you guys smash the thumbs up button, like, share, and subscribe. I need to come up with some crazy new new thing for that. Check out the links in the description below uh, for more information. Uh, Facebook group that that type of stuff. Um, and yeah, leave us a comment. We want to hear from you guys. This is to start a conversation, an open dialogue with other players to find out what would benefit everyone so that we can keep enjoying the game in, in a healthy population for as long as possible. So with that, have a wonderful day.